So we are picking up where we left off. I'll call that last lecture Units 1. This is Units 2 finishing up. Um, here's our list over here of what we're going through. We're having Karen uh, conversion of units. She'll be using units a lot. Should be a piece of cake. We just want to get this out of the way and make sure you have no questions. Uh, we've talked about math and equality, and we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, the NIST sets the standard for what exactly we want to call a meter, or at least how precisely we'll talk about that in the next lecture. Uh, the SI, also called the MKS system, the CGS system, physical equality, physical unity, or conversion factors. And now we're going to do re rapid replacement therapy, just something I'm going to show you how to do it quickly. Uh, prefixes for powers of 10 and some scientific notation. Again, we'll use that next time and mixed units, not to be confused with mixed nuts. So, I want to, I don't know if you caught this in the last lecture, but I was up here and I said 10 inches is the same as 25.4 centimeters. So that's a little bit sloppy, it really equals, doesn't mean the same as, does it? Let's get rid of that. It means the same amount as 10 inches, maybe, no, that's not 10 inches, something. Uh, it has the same length as, is the same length as 25.4 centimeters. Um, so I want to be careful with that. So uh, it's the same amount as, these might be two different things, but they have the same amount of length. Uh, also, where I find people are really sloppy, including uh, professors, because we just, you know, shorthand things. But notice here I said SI is the same as MKS. I didn't write equals. So, you know, you could say, yeah, I can get away with saying SI equals MKS, but I'm not talking about an amount. I'm talking about a system of units. It's the same system of units as this. So I don't really want to say SI equals MKS. Up here I said, SI, I did a double arrow, so maybe we'll use arrows. Often that means implies, so it's even still a little sloppy. MKS. Now, I want to drive this point home uh, just a little bit more because it causes a tremendous amount of uh, problems and subtleties. So, if I said Anthony's bank account uh, or bank, let me say money, money in the bank, is equal to uh, Julia's money in the bank, that's fine, because I'm saying it's the same amount as. Now, Anthony said, hey, that's the same, they're the same, they're the same, I can take money out of Julia's. And no problem, because it's the same. No, they're not the same, they're the same amount as. Where this is going to come into issue is, I'll be more careful, net force equals mass times acceleration. You may have heard of Newton's second law. It can be written very sloppily, and when you get into subtle details, people mess it up. MA is not the same as a force. This is not a force. We can do this with net impulse is the same amount as the change of momentum, but they aren't the same thing. Is not an impulse. So just let that wash over you. Wanted to make that point um, there. The other thing I want to point out here in dealing with units is you want again to have an intuition. I mean, this is one kilogram. It's what one kilogram feels like. Take a volume of liter, which is length times length times length. Uh, right, the volume of one liter of water, and it's going to have the same mass as this much of you know, this substances. Pretty close. There we go. One kilogram, that's a kilogram. So we'll talk about that later. You want to feel for a kilogram. You, know, you don't want to drop a kilogram on your foot. A gram, no one cares. Of course, you have a little bit of a sense of time. Uh, when you're doing conversions and working with these numbers, one thing that I find is very helpful is that if you take a big number 
of small units and you're going to convert to bigger units, well, then you're going to get a small number out front of big units. Uh, let's see, for example, uh, 5,280 feet, well, how many miles? Miles is a big unit, so you're going to have fewer miles. In fact, you're now one, aren't you? Um, 3,600 seconds is how many hours? Well, it's a small number of hours. It's one hour, but physically, of course, those are the same. So let's continue on with that said. Let's find out a way that you can sometimes do this much quicker than in the last example of the last uh, video. And I call that rapid replacement therapy. So let's check this out. I'll keep that physical unity conversion factor. Now you can do it that way. Uh, Shortcutting is okay as long as you're careful. You don't want to write every algebraic step, but enough to be able to be careful and not make a mistake, and that's a fine line. So, rapid replacement. There, no one knows what that means except us, okay? So, but what does it mean? It means that if I say I've got 9.23 meters, and I want to know how many feet that is, this one's a little more difficult, but you should know this. Not now, but after now, when I'm done. That one meter here is equivalent to, and I can measure with, a, with inches and feet, 3.28 feet. So what have I done? I've replaced meter with its physical equivalent of 3.28 feet. And so, instead of writing a conversion factor, which takes more chalk or ink or time, I've got, it's 9.3 times 3.28 feet. Okay? So just replace the unit with the amount in other units. Simple, uh, other example, uh, 42 hours is equal to 42, well, an hour is 60 minutes. So it's 42 times 60 without the conversion factor. A minute, that's 42 times 60 times 60 seconds, because a minute is replaced by 60 seconds. Now, you might know, and it's good to know, that an hour is 60 times 60 seconds, or straight away, an hour is 3,600 seconds. It's good to know. It's not, not hard. So you see, I could do this with conversion factors, or I can take a step. Probably good to write that step, I think. Multiply these two, and you get some number of seconds. And that's all rapid replacement therapy is. I just had to come up with a name to show you what I always do whenever I can, whenever the conversion is easy. If I've got a certain number of feet, uh, I don't know, I'm on 42. 42.1 feet. Well, that's the same as 42.1, how many inches? 12 inches. I just write that in two steps. And then multiply it, and that's it. OK? So that's nice when it works. If you're not sure, take the long route. But you do need to develop some speed, because as you get on in uh, upper division courses, exams can be really time tight. So Develop that. And that's all I've got to say about rapid replacement therapy. Um, but it's quite nice and it really builds off of the same ideas. Okay, so speaking of which, let's come over here, check off our list. Where are we? We're, we've got conversion factors or physical unity. That's one way to convert units. Or, when it's nice and easy, rapid replacement therapy. That's great. This is related very much to prefixes for powers of 10. So let's come on over here where the board is 
been prepared. And uh, let's talk about scientific notation. Again, we're going to work through this when we talk about uncertainty and measurements um, and how we write that down. Scientific notation, you don't have to use scientific notation, but it can be useful. And it's commonly used because it's useful, and you'll see why on the next lecture. It's useful often, not always required. So whatever, how you want to write it, what units you use, depends on what you're doing. It's plus or minus. Some number less than 10, like that, or something, zero, or like not zero, 0 0.0001, or whatever it is you want, but some number less than 10 times a power of 10. But wait, it's a number less than 10. Would this be, let's see if you know this, 0 0.001 times a power, would that be scientific notation? No, that's not going to be scientific notation. You're going to take this, what I mean by this here is some number from 1 up to 9.9999. So it can be 1.03, 1. whatever it is, up to there. This is the standard scientific notation, but you can use it however you want. Again, you can, if you want, you can put 42.8 uh, centimeters, we'll see. That's fine. Or you can put it in scientific notation for 0.28 times 10, because that's the same of these guys' centimeters. So that's all that is, and we'll work more with that in a second. You see, I've written centimeters. Centimeters. Well, that's, again, a useful way to talk about these units. It's more compact. It's easier to think of. A centimeters smaller than width of your pinky. Um, so we want to develop physical intuition. And, and better units can kind of be easier to visualize. So example, powers of 10. We can do 10 to the 9, or a billion, 10 to the 6, a million, 10 to the 3, 1,000, obviously. Um, and in engineering, frequently we'll talk about powers of 10 that are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Also in other sciences, but in engineering, that's kind of classic. And so in engineering, you might go down to 10 to the negative 3, Again, it's not a hard and fast rule. 10 to the negative 2 is very useful. 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the negative 6, 10 to the negative 9, negative 12, negative 15. You need to just write that down and commit it to memory. It doesn't fill up your brain. Right? The more you use it, the more you learn, the more you grow your brain. So um, what are these called? Well, instead of writing this, the shorthand would be G. So you can write it. 3.4 times 10 to the 9 miles, or 3.4 gigamiles. Now try to imagine a gigamile. Well, what's that? That's a billion miles. What's that? I mean, is that like from here to Seattle? So if you get that as an answer for here to Seattle, you're going, I think I got something wrong, because 93 million miles is the average distance to the sun. So again, we develop that intuition. Like, what if I went out? 3.4 gigamiles, what would I hit? Would you hit Andromeda galaxy? Would you go further? No, what would you hit? 10 to the 6, you can either write it 10 to the 6, that's fine, or just write mega. Mega miles, mega seconds, mega watts, uh, on. Bytes, right? Gigabytes. What's more than 10 to the 9? Uh, let's go up 3, 10 to the 12, tera. Now, now we buy our drives of terabytes, right? Three terabytes. I won't go buy one of those guys. Right? 10 to the 3 kilo. So it's just like rapid replacement, right? You can replace the power of 10 with a symbol. Kilogram, kilometer, kilometer, right? Um, centimeter, centigram is fine. Centisecond, you don't know, hear very often, which could. In fact, you use something I'll tell you about in a second. 10 to the negative 3. Notice, this is lowercase, milli. 
This is uppercase. You can't be sloppy anymore. Engineers had better not be sloppy with notation. You can't leave off units. You better be clear about how many digits you're going to include and how that reflects in your measurement. And it's fun. But this means 10 to the negative 3. This means 10 to the 6. Capital M is 10 to the 6. Right? 10 to the negative 6 is micro. That symbol is written kind of like a U, almost like an M as well, with a long tail like that. The Greek spelling is like that. People often say mu. If your Latin language would be mu, like a cow. 10 to the negative 9. So micrometer or micrometer. Right? 10 to the negative 6. Or micron is, is shortened because we use it so often. 10 to the negative 9. Nano. That's very uh, nanotechnology. Uh, what is a nanosecond? We talk in terms of nanoseconds, 10 to the negative 9 seconds. Um, so it's just useful. It's just shorthand. It's, it's all it is. And it makes you be able to throw, write things more succinctly, throw ideas around quickly, think on terms of what scale am I working? Am I talking about gigas or am I talking about nanos? Uh, go down to pico and go down again to femto. Right? And know those. Just know them. If it takes it, it's have a little flip book. Write them down, look, look at it five times a day until you, you know them. And as you write, as you work with them, make sure you commit them to memory. So you can simply replace this with that or replace the G with the power of 10. It's along akin to the um, rapid replacement therapy. All right, nothing more to it than that. How are we doing on time? OK, last thing I want to do here quickly. Um, is that you can certainly mix units. Look, you need to develop some intuition. Like a kilometer is how many meters? It's a thousand meters. One kilometer or kilometer is one thousand meters. Right? It's the same thing. How many miles is that? That's something you should know. It's about half a mile. That's pretty rough, but it's about half a mile. Two thirds of a mile, that's a little closer. It's 0 0.621 miles. Know that. You should also know that one, uh, excuse me, 3.28 feet is the same as a meter. Know that. Just now, you've got to know that, okay? You don't have to know everything, but these are, are useful. So, for instance, if I'm talking about. Uh, how many, I'm talking about speeding up in a car. Okay, I might be interested in how many miles per hour, common speed in the US, nowhere else, everybody else is uh, kilometers per hour, I pick up every second. So maybe I pick up uh, 10 miles per hour every two seconds slow. All right. So that's five miles per hour per second. So mixed units are fine. I used hour here. I used second here. Fine. Who cares? That's, that makes sense. I can think of how many miles per hour I get every second, and that's not very much. Um, so we'll play with mixed units uh, quite a bit more, too, whenever it's convenient. You use what works for the application and what facilitates your intuition of what's physically going on and the physical amounts involved. And I think you're good to now practice and make perfect and move on and stride. Good luck.